the death size. We all go a little mad sometimes. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? You're gonna need a bigger boat. They're coming to get you, Barbara. I'll play again. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Killer, I'm just gonna bash you. What's blood for? If not for shooting. Welcome to 31 Days of War Movies 2021. I'm your host, Sam Johnston. Back with me again, we got Allison and Adam, the A team. Mm. The A team tonight. <laughs> we thought of that joke right at the same time. Uh-huh, it was awesome. Uh-huh. That was fun. We just watched Misery from 1990, directed by Rob Reiner, written by William Goldman, based on the novel by Stephen King. After a famous author is rescued from a car crash by a fan of his novels, he comes to realize that the care he's receiving is only the beginning of a nightmare of captivity and abuse. This movie felt a lot like I was watching Stephen King be like, this is what it feels like to interact with fans. I, uh, yeah. It kind of seemed like that. It felt like that yeah. the whole time. And like, I know it's a movie and I know it's like, this is an adaptation of a book. Uh, and like, we've got, a lot of different filters on top of this, like uh, William Goldman, the, the the screenplay writer, and then you got Rob Reiner, the director, and on, like these actors and stuff. But it's still, I still like the concept of Stephen <laughs> King that like that amorphous like godlike being who has filled up a shelf on your book <laughs> case right here. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, like he just was so over. Like it just felt like Stephen King was there the whole time. The movie starts. Um, like right into the end of Paul Sheldon finishing up his book, mm-hmm. finishing up a book. He seems very satisfied and he does his little ritual. Um, and then we kind of quickly get to him on the road. Mm-hmm. It's just very quickly into the action of the story. And we get some funky music going on. And mm-hmm. it feels like a rom-com. It feels, yeah, it feels like the era that it's in. It just, yeah. Yeah, it could be a Christmas movie, even. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Guy's going home for the holidays. Yeah. But he very quickly loses control of the car, and he's really speeding down those roads, too. So it makes sense that he mm-hmm. goes off. Mm-hmm. But uh, he goes off. He flips the car, flips his world upside down, literally and metaphorically. He's pulled out of his car. By some mysterious figure. Yeah. We don't know who it is. Uh, revives him. Yeah. Gets him back. I thought it was, I mean, I know he's clutching his portfolio, but I thought it was interesting that the stranger like took it and put it in their jacket. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if I save someone from a car wreck, even if they were holding on to it, I wouldn't worry about yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. An object, whatever. But I was like, interesting. So they knew this is something. That's something absolutely. special. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's absolutely some sort of indication to who this character, whoever's saving mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. Kind of off. Mm-hmm. Kind of off. It is a weird situation. Um, and then he comes, he's coming to and hearing, I'm your number one fan mm-hmm. in his mm-hmm. in his dreams. And I had on that, like, it's saving, but I actually wrote the word abduction because it very much, it was the blurry lights and it was that, like, eerie, distorted alien voice. And it's like, it very much looked like when people wake up on alien ships that after they've been abducted. Oh. There's the IV dripping next to him. Yeah. It was that, like, hazy... It, like, very much reminded me of that. So I meet Annie, and um, she's his number one fan. Mm-hmm. And this movie, and this is the first scene that we're with Annie and mm-hmm. Paul, this movie is full of intense close-ups. Yes. So many face close-ups. Yeah. So many presenting things close-ups. I think it's doing a couple different things. It's first of all, putting you in the perspective of Paul. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when the close-ups happen, it's her looking into the camera, Mm -hmm. over the camera, or her handing him or the camera things. So we're being put in the perspective of Paul. But also it's like, to me, it felt very like invasive. Like the, the close... Yeah. Face shots were just like, it felt like she was in your face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he is trapped in this house where she is, I mean, pretty much controlling every single part of his life at this point. Another thing that she was doing a lot through this movie was treating him both like a boyfriend and also like a baby. Mm-hmm. 
It was, the, and she even said, "I maybe in this first scene or like the first couple scenes, you're like a baby." But then in the same scene, she'd say, "Oh, Paul," which was very like. She was in love with him. Like she was so my oh my darling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just like from the beginning, she was just like swooning over him mm -hmm. completely. Oh yeah, that is that moment mm -hmm. where she asks him if she's so shy and coy mm -hmm. and modest. She's like, I'm really me? me? Yeah. And he's like like pretty chill about it. He like doesn't really care. Well, if you're not suspecting anything, you'd be like, "Yeah, you saved my life." Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's she cool. also asked permission though. She does. She didn't like read yeah. it beforehand. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She like Very asked, true. she felt like she had to ask permission there. The next scene with Paul and Annie that we get is the soup mm -hmm. feeding scene, which again, immediate power dynamic going on. Mm -hmm. He can't eat mm -hmm. by himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she has to feed him. She's the one that determines if he gets to eat, essentially. Mm -hmm. I'm not in an authority to have any criticism. Right. He's like, mm -hmm. no, 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 it's fine. And she's like, no, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, no, it's fine. She's like, okay, so. <laughs> the profanity. Yeah. The swearing. Uh-huh. Yeah. The swearing. What's with all that? And it's, I mean, it's his book, so he mm -hmm. can do whatever he wants. But yeah. he's like, he comes from a place of like, well, you know, it's about, kids in the slums and i was a slum kid and that's how everyone talks mm -hmm. he shouldn't have said everyone yeah <laughs> because that's what sets her off mm -hmm. yeah and she starts like spiraling down this thing and just keeps spiraling spiral spiraling into a rant about swearing and then she spills the soup because she's getting so into mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. And then she freaks out and look says, what look what you made me do. Me do. Mm -hmm. Again, this very like child, parent talking to child thing. Mm -hmm. And then she clicks off, almost. She like mm -hmm. turns back to Annie, not crazy Annie. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's definitely Paul's first inkling of, maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe you should call someone. You, you mm -hmm. called someone, right? Mm -hmm. You called someone, right? Mm -hmm. The next scene is... Annie coming home with the newest misery. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. overjoyed and she gives him a huge breakfast in bed. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not soup anymore. It's yes. it's a full, he's in control of how he eats in that situation. As soon as she gets through the book, that scene when she comes in furious, first of all, takes place at night. And I think that's the first scene that we see her interacting with him at night. So everything's really dark, heavy shadows. Mm -hmm. Uh, moonlight coming in, like cutting across her face. And she, again, we're getting these massive close-ups of her face and she's scary. Mm -hmm. She's like furious, mm -hmm. she's shaking the bed, making him, you know, moving mm -hmm. his broken legs, mm -hmm. um, calling him a murderer, mm -hmm. saying she killed, he killed misery, killed my misery. How dare you? You, what'd she call him? Bird, uh, like a dirty bird, dirty yeah. bird, dirty birdie, yeah, dirty birdie, lying dirty yeah. birdie. My pen to paper had nothing to do with it. No, yeah, it wasn't me. Yeah, but he like relies on the story. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. almost he falls back on what happens in the story rather than what's going on in the real world, mm -hmm. which Annie does a lot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's very good at playing his cards close to his chest through the whole movie. Like, mm -hmm. like, I mean, obviously it becomes very obvious that mm -hmm. she is uh, not telling him the truth and that she is uh, very unstable and stuff, yeah. but he really like catches on quick and like really watches and like appeals to her yes. in order to get through in order to survive. And there's that really interesting scene where she starts to talk about like what the books mean to her. That's where we start to learn about her husband leaving her and she, her way to cope with it was just, just dive into work and like, and there, those night shifts are long. Mm -hmm. And she would talk about how she would read the misery books over and over mm -hmm. and over again during those night shifts. Uh, an already unstable person is now broken up with and then filling it with another fictional character, which becomes very real to her my misery after she freaks out about his cussing she realizes why he's there mm -hmm. why god brought her mm -hmm. him was so that she can help him 
and save mm-hmm. him mm-hmm. from writing this smut. Because mm-hmm. she presents it as like, you have to choose yeah. to, mm-hmm. to make this change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, she's dousing his legs his, yeah. in gasoline. Mm-hmm. And the legs, I think, are... That's something that I kept going back to, too, in this movie. His broken legs obviously are physically crippling him Mm -hmm. and keeping him there. But it's also a tool that she uses against him multiple times. In this scene, she slams things on his legs. Mm -hmm. Um, She's also in charge of healing his legs. Mm -hmm. So she has that power still. His legs are a thing... They're they're almost they could like take him away. It's yeah, just yeah. They're they literally he if they weren't broken he could walk out of here, mm-hmm. but he can't. They are they they are trapping him. His legs mm-hmm. are ultimately trapping him in this house. Every time they shoot that wheelchair, it's like super down low, and the legs are extended out mm-hmm. towards a can. It makes the legs feel even more like in the way. Mm-hmm. Yes. they seem huge Very and long, so. yeah. and exactly what they're doing to him, they're getting in his way. She has moments where she literally turns yeah. off. Yeah. Like there's nothing behind her eyes. But mm-hmm. she says those weird, that strange stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's especially prominent in that scene where she's got the blues. Yeah. Just skip ahead there for a second. Mm-hmm. She's so nothing's going on inside. But she's saying, I love you, Paul. I love every bit of you. You, I, I love you more than just the writer. I love mm-hmm. you as the person. And then she brings out the gun. Yeah. Sometimes I think about using... It's so... There's nothing inside mm-hmm. at all. Um, and that is, to me, more scary. Yeah, this is when we're going into him breaking up the pills and starting the new book. And um, at first she's like, no, 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 no. You got this all wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't just make up an excuse this time because... You want to change it. And mm-hmm. she goes into this other story about her childhood, her childhood yeah. going to see the movies and then there'd be a cliffhanger every week. And then more often than not, the cliffhangers would be resolved by something ridiculous and she would get really pissed off. Mm-hmm. because She's like, that's not what happened last week. I saw Rocket Man explode in the car and now he's rolling out of the car. Mm-hmm. That's not what happened. And I wrote down again, she's getting, she has she gets so wrapped up in these stories, even as a child, mm-hmm. it was close to her. This was all that was important to her. Mm-hmm. She was first in line every week to the to the movies. And she, they, these stories, these fictional stories, are her life. They, like, sync his typing with the piano overture. And he's like a conductor and an author and a creator all in one. Oh. I really liked the syncing of the oh. sounds. It was really cool. Like this big orchestral movement. I think too, I mean, he is a writer. So even if he's kidnapped and trapped by this Mm -hmm. person, when he gets into that writing mode, I feel like he still can just kind of lose himself. Even though he's being Mm -hmm. forced to write the story, Mm -hmm. it feels like he still gets into it. And he still kind of lets himself go into the story to make it good. Or to make mm-hmm. it a real... I mean, he has to, obviously. But he also needs to lose himself in the characters in some way and in the story to make it that good again. So he feels the music of the story again. Mm-hmm. He He's getting back into it. Mm-hmm. He's getting back into misery. Yeah. It's like huge time jump. Mm-hmm. Like rain starts yeah. happening. Rain yeah. and Annie's reading the book and the sheriff's reading the books. He's getting into misery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He pulls a quote from misery that yep. sticks out to him. Hmm. Writes it down in the book. Or no, puts it on, on a, piece a piece of paper. Of paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he actually takes out a piece of paper and writes that down. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Misery's about to go on trial. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> but he's a B and he sees in the newspaper, it's literally the exact same quote that he wrote down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Literally the exact same one. And Annie, could you get a little more original? Please. I'm trying yes, to remember. Yes, he goes on another escape attempt yes. because he has to get the knife, right? Because yeah. that's yeah. right after, because it's the mm-hmm. scene where she's like, she brings out the gun for the first time. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. And she's like, I think about putting bullets in it. 
When, when he when he explores the house, he finds out that she murdered the babies. Oh, right. Yeah, that's important. Uh, she murdered the babies. And, like, in her little, like, thing, she says, another baby in, like, like pink. I wrote that down, yeah. Lighter. Like, I, she wrote, I didn't yeah, she wrote like, that Yeah, like, in addition to the articles, yeah. she, like, has, like, extra little notes. Yeah, little notes, little scrapbooking notes. Another baby. Oh, that God. I but there's, like, a squiggle on her letters. Like, it's uh-huh. not, like... Like it's, like it's like it's scrapbooked. Like yeah, it's, yeah. Looks, yeah. 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 What does it say on the front of it? Like fond memories yeah, or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Oh god. And then he thinks he's all good. He puts the knife under his bed. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, it, we get that like wake up super close up yeah. face into his arm. Gone. Mm-hmm. Then we wake up the next day and everyone's feeling great. She's mm-hmm. seemingly normal. Yeah. But he's strapped down to a bed. Yeah. Because her method of hobbling is putting a piece of wood yeah. in between his ankles and taking a sledgehammer, sledgehammer to the feet. Up. Right to the feet. And yeah. the first one, Ooh. you the first see, one I you watched. see it. Yeah. <laughs> the first one I watched. See, but the second one, you don't actually even. <laughs> they don't show oh, you the second okay. one. Yeah. They just yeah, show his reaction. Yeah. 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 And then as he's writhing around in pain, she goes, God, I love you. And walks out. Yeah. And, go, and the next scene, she's outside playing with Misery. Mm-hmm. Hi, darling. Yeah. yeah. Pumpkin. Pumpkin, yeah. yeah Pumpkin. Oh, you kid her. <laughs> you kid her. We're getting towards the end of him writing the book. That scene where she's got a gun in one hand and a needle in the other is so, like, like too, like... The juxtaposition makes the needle so violent. And people see needles as like scary, violent things anyway. But like it just makes both of them even worse. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And the fact that it's also being held by someone who looks like they have nothing going on inside. Mm -hmm. And is talking about Mm murder-suicide right now. Mm -hmm. She calls it beautiful. It'll be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And what does Paul do? Turns on his goddamn Amazing. intuition yeah. again, He's, and is like, "Yes, you're right. So it's gonna be beautiful." Fast with it too. Oh she's God. quick, and he's quick. Mm-hmm. It's a battle. Like yeah. they're they're these two minds, one evil, one good, are like battling against each other. These mind games that they're playing with each other, and he's very quickly like, "Yeah, you're right. It'll be beautiful." Mm-hmm. But we have to bring back misery. Mm-hmm. We got to bring her back yeah. to life. We just had that shot of her with the gun and the syringe, mm-hmm. blank face, mm-hmm. and then the next scene that we see her in, <gasps> I'm so excited, Paul. She yeah. is two different people. Like, yeah. She's completely switched. Oh, right. And before he gets taken out of the basement, he quickly stashes That's a the, yeah. lighter yeah. fluid in yeah. his butt, yeah. which was a good move. <laughs> good move, Paul. Good move, Paul. She brings him everything that he needs, his champagne glass, the sh- the Don Pe- Pegnon, <laughs> the the match, and the cigarette. Which is the opening scene in the movie. Opening the scene. Movie. This is where we started. This is where we're about to end. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, she says, did I do good? Yeah. And she says that. She has said that before. Which to me, when she asks that question, it immediately makes the power dynamic feel completely switched. Because yeah. that's... That's like a kid question. Yeah. It's like, did I do good? Mm -hmm. Or like a dog almost. Did Mm -hmm. I do okay? Did I do good? No, actually. You forgot a glass for yourself. Mm -hmm. (gasps) Wow. Oh, Paul. (laughs) Oh, Paul. Oh, Paul's so sweet. Oh, this murder suicide's going to be beautiful. It's going to be such a good murder suicide. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And so she goes and gets her cup. But then Paul springs into action. Yeah. And pulls the move that she pulled on him mm-hmm. at the beginning, which was threatening her with the story, mm-hmm. with with fire, burning the story, burning the story. <sighs> and he lights the the match. That is one of the coolest fucking things. things. So I love that cool. one of those. I want, so cool. I want those. Yeah, because you cannot the not strike cool. anywhere matches. Oh my god! You do or the, the tooth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, this movie made me want it more than ever yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he's like, just flares up in his hand, lights it on fire, throws no! it down on the thing. <sighs> My misery. My misery. My misery. Yeah. Yeah. And he takes that typewriter and hits her on the head yeah. with the typewriter. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. I mean, the elements of this story are all so clean. Yes. It's just like, yes, the 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 thing that mm-hmm. drew 
her to him. The 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 anchor that she's mm-hmm. using to weigh him down is the thing that he's going to dash across her head to get himself out. Yep. And then not just the typewriter, but also the pig. Mm-hmm. Misery. Mm-hmm. Misery. Mm-hmm. Misery itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ultimately, got misery it. Itself. Yeah. Uh-huh. And she gets up and he's still on the ground. I thought it was such an interesting moment. He uses his legs to yeah. trip her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But as like a, he like swings as his tool. leg as a yeah. tool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This thing that, again, he's been trapped with mm-hmm. this entire movie. He then uses to swing over and <laughs> trip her and then her head goes Bends onto the typewriter. Onto yeah. typewriter. Yeah. Yeah. He thinks he's got away, but then classic horror movie. Yeah. Back on his back. Yeah. And... What does it in the end is it's the, the pig. Mm-hmm. It's it, it it is misery, but it's the pig misery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, which she kinda, named. Which yeah. she but named she, again. Yeah. yeah, her own undoing almost. Mm-hmm. It's because mm-hmm. the the misery that he creates is the beautiful story, right? That that mm-hmm. she is like unable to uh, be drawn away from, and the misery that she creates is a pig. She wants Paul Sheldon's mind. She wants mm-hmm. to create things as beautiful as Paul mm-hmm. Sheldon, but what is the misery that she makes? A pig. Mm-hmm. That's her creation yeah. of misery. Mm-hmm. She can't be like him. Mm-mm. She hates him, but she loves him. Misery is going to follow him around forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the memory of Annie will always be there. Mm-hmm. His number one fan. That, that See? like, her, like, drawing in the cart and him just, like, like having this normal conversation, but then just watching her come. And it's just this like, it was, it was a kind of like PTSD that I've never thought of before of just like being like, I know this is only in my, like he mm-hmm. knows it's only yeah. in his mind, but he's experiencing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just like, damn, this guy is hard to rattle. There's, this yeah. guy is hard to fucking shake. Mm. It's either that or he literally sees her everywhere yeah. so much that seeing her as the dessert cart girl, she maybe he sees a bunch of Annie Wilkes in that in that maybe. room, mm-hmm. and she's just another one. Yeah, thanks. That's so. That's sweet. That's sweet. Yeah, Fade that's black. nice. Yeah, that's nice. Great. Awesome. I am never going. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I'm never going to write a book in the snow again. Mm-hmm. Never. Yeah, let's go to tropical places. Yeah. Why the snowy place, anyway? Check out my podcast, Season 3, Episode 4. Anywhere you can find podcasts. Do it, please. Do it, please do it. Fun times. Mm-hmm. And you can also find me uh, at Beep Beep Bridgie T on Instagram. And also check out Playground Social, which is a studio that we are recording this at. And until tomorrow, this has been 31 days. Let's get spooky, y'all. <laughs> Oh. You killed misery, you bastard!